Hello, hockey fans. I'm Dan Rusinowski. Welcome to the Company 39 show, presented in part by Warrior and by Sharks captain Joe Pavelski. We welcome you to Joseph George, one of the top purveyors of California wines in the entire world. And we're here with the captain of the San Jose Sharks to talk about the Joe Pavelski digital memoir and in a very exciting three-point program that's going to help hockey players, coaches, fans, and anybody associated with the game who wants to learn about leadership, some guidance for success. Joe, first of all, what is Company 39? Company 39 is a production company that I've teamed with um, that really illustrates a digital memoir of my life and, and kind of what I've gone through to you know, on my journey to the NHL and, and some of the things that have made me successful. Every player has great mentors, and Joe has several going back to his high school days. He's got Jack Staskoff, he's got PKO Handley, he's got many others. Joe, tell us about some of those people. The high school days with Jack Staskoff and um, the junior days with PKO Handley, it was, these were moments that meant so much to me, and as you keep hitting another level, you, you're looking for more, and it's it's pretty cool process to go back and, and touch on some of these and hit some of the events that you kind of forgot about. There's just so much that went into it. You can't say, you know, thanks enough to these coaches, these friends, your teammates that, you know, helped you along the way. And that's what this story has really kind of brought out, I think. The second component is an ebook, and that's something that's really interesting. It sort of supplements the video. Tell us about the ebook. Yeah, the ebook is just you know a little collaboration about some of the things that we've we've gone through and certain events that you know I found were kind of game changers along the way. Um, as for, from injuries and sitting in the weight room, you know it seems on the road and just certain things to keep the hands going while your body tries to heal. It's uh, it all plays a different part, you know, in in success and having that confidence when you step out on the ice and share that journey with everyone that's been involved. The ebook is also a great way to learn some leadership skills just on paper, well, looking at some of the things that Joe Pavelski went through in his life and, and learning from them. And of course, there's the third component to this great program, and that's the digital drills. The fact that you can go online and actually work with one of the best players in the world to help your game. I know that you would have loved to have probably had that from somebody when you were growing up. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's such an important part is, is to kind of see some video for me or, or get with a coach and have somebody show you how to do it. And this is another tool that we believe can help them um, kind of see some of the things that I've done. I've been in the backyard shooting pucks and for a long stretch I was shooting a certain way and then you, you get with another coach and there might be a different idea and about you know just getting a quicker release and more accuracy and you know so some of that all gets involved and brought out and you know we're excited to share it. There are a lot of great things in this documentary, in the ebook, and of course in the training drills. A lot of things that people can learn. And we've got all of that coming up. We've got some fan questions to answer. We'll have some special guests, Brent Burns, Jeremy Roenick, Kevin Weeks, some of the great names in the game. And we'll also get fan questions from people around the country as to what they want to hear from the Sharks captain, Joe Pavelski. So stay tuned. Company 39 show is just underway. When you play a sport you love, I think it comes out naturally. I knew Joe was a, was a good hockey player. The puck gets to him, and it's fascinating to me, and that's his brain. One of the secrets of the pros is that they do their job, do their work. Watch some of the things that he does away from the puck. Watch his work ethic. You want your kid and your players to look at and say, I want to be like Joe. It wasn't a smooth ride to the top. It was pretty rocky. I like to read Harry Potter. He likes to read like mental books. Man, this guy just is working on it all the time. What you've just seen is something really special, but if you want to see the entire documentary, you have to go to company39.com and participate. But let's participate right now with two of the greatest players in the game, the captain of the San Jose Sharks, Joe Pavelski, and our special guest today, the Norris Trophy winning defenseman on the Sharks roster, Brent Burns. Burnsy, you're a teammate of Joe Pavelski for a long time. What's it like being a teammate of this guy? That's been great. I think, you know, when I got traded here, I had the opportunity to play with a lot of, uh, 
you know, older guys that had, had been through a lot, and, and I get to learn from a guy like Jumbo and, and Patty Marlowe, and, and Chloe was there, Dan Boyle, and, uh, you know, Pavsky was drafted my year, but he's kind of been that guy, you know, every team has a guy that's, that does everything right all the time, and, and uh, you know, has been a great mentor. I've, I've learned a lot from him. We've developed a special chemistry. You know, I think with the way our skills kind of can, can relate to each other, me getting shots through, he, he's got some of the best hand-eye coordination I've ever seen, so it's, uh, it's been great. Those are some of the technical aspects, but also you have to give to each other and you get from each other as teammates. Uh, what are the things that you get from Joe Pavelski off the ice uh, in getting ready for a next game? Well, I think we have a lot of fun together. We have a lot of the same, same likes off the ice, uh, a lot of dinners together. and You know, but on, the on-ice stuff, you know, it's like I said, it's uh, a lot of our skills kind of help each other a lot and um, you know I've always been a guy that more reactionary kind of fly by the seat of my pants and and he's the kind of the guy that I always I always watch and, and you know if I've got questions he's the guy I kind of I, I go to and lean on and I'm the guy that screws the drills up and I, and I usually have to ask him how to do them right. So. <laughs> well, that's part of it. The, the, the focus on detail is hugely important. Is that one of the things that really separates Joe Pavelski from the average player in the NHL? Yeah, I think it's just, you know, it's the way he sees the game and the way he, uh, you know, approaches it. He's very detailed. He's very um, cerebral in, in his approach. I think, you know, everybody's a little different. I, I think, you know, the way I, I, I'm pretty loose, I, I go into the game just kind of, you know, I want to be free. I want to be able to create things on the go, and um, you know, I'm enjoying it in a different way than he he's enjoying it. And uh, you know, he just he seems to do everything right. He, he's he's thinking about different things that happen during the game and, and practices those things until it's perfect. And um, you know, I think the way my personality is, it's I've been able to learn a lot and, and try to mesh some of the things that he brings and. You know, it makes me that much better to, to be able to learn from a guy like that. But you haven't just learned from him. Joe, you've learned from Brent Burns, too. I mean, what it's like to be on the ice with a guy who's won the Norris Trophy. Oh, it's great. I think, uh, you know, going back to when Burns, he came over from Minnesota, we were excited, you know, to add that piece t to our team. And um, we, we had a pretty good power play unit at the time. And, you know, Brent was on the second unit. And I think everyone was still like, When's this guy gonna get a shot? We want him up here. Like he's got this skill that can create so much. Um, and and for us to kind of come together and it's it's been an interesting roller coaster. Is him playing D, coming up on forward, one of the best lines I've ever played on, and most fun we've ever had was you know with him being up front with Jumbo and, and Bernsey and myself. It was, I think that's where we really learned about each other a lot. And um, when his move went back to the to the D, to the blue line, it was. Uh, we had a good understanding of what we wanted to accomplish on the forward side, and now he could see it from the back. And we spent a lot of time, a lot of mornings shooting pucks together. Um, it's very interesting how you go out there in the morning and we'll do some, one day I'll take it, and I'll be like, let's do these shots and, and then go to tips. And then, you know, just the other day, he's like, hey, I'm running. I'm running the morning sh shooting session right now. And uh, then you come out and- And he's he, been on fire since too. <laughs> I bet he Absolutely. Has. <laughs> you know, it's- you think you're your best, your best coach, and uh, until somebody else sets you up, it's uh, you can see what can happen. And you come out, and you just have that connection from the morning. It leads to a game, and a couple plays happen, and it's pretty cool to see everything blend together that way. And I think so much from when we talk about it, his first few years with Jacques Lemaire in Minnesota, it's uh, how he had to work on his shot every day, and, and I'm the same way. And I think we've both have just grown into wanting to work on it and wanting to try to keep getting better and you know seeing where we can get to it's uh it's a nice guy to have out there on the ice in the morning you know, you're referring to something that's really interesting the idea that you're in such sync with each other when you're on the ice whether it's on the power play uh setting up some of those beautiful plays you're tipping shots in front uh, that comes from a lot of hard work doesn't it yeah it does i think um just some reps and you know whether it's hard work or you're just enjoying it you know when you're doing it it's that's another discussion, but we there's a lot of moments where I'm just reading off him what the, you know, on the tipping side, what's their um, forward, what lane's he trying to take away? Because I know Burns will find that lane, so I got to kind of see what lane he's he's working on, and then he makes just a lot of plays. So, you know, going back to the other night with the the goal that he kind of slid over, it's all him. I just 
was set up where if I can get open and, and he can catch me and out of his eye, it's uh, one of those plays that you're looking at open net. And you want to feel free, Burnsy, as I, I'm sure Joe does, but, uh, but that free, feeling of freedom really helps when you know that there's somebody so reliable on the ice with you, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he, he's, I think one of the, the strengths of his game is he's able to take a game and, you know, realize different things that have happened and then approach it the next day and, and go through those plays and, you know, then, then he's usually finding little openings and then the next game, you know, we'll work on it in the morning and then that night, boom, that same play happens. It's, I mean, little, little roles he does and, and how he's able to, to feed off of their D-man or their centerman and, and uh, create an open lane. It's, you know, for me as a defenseman, they're, they're, they're still getting so good at getting in lanes and stuff. And, you know, a lot of times I don't even have to look at the net anymore. I'm, I'm looking off just to find him wherever he is. And, and uh, he's so good at creating that little bit of space with that guy where he thinks he has him, but, you know, a stick's free and he's able to get a stick on it and, and uh, either score or get a, you know, really mess the goalie up and, and get a good rebound for, the, uh, for his line mate, so. By the way, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that uh, you played both forward and defense at an exceedingly high level. And Joe, I, I can only think of a few people in the history of the NHL that have actually done that at the level that he's done it. Red Kelly did it with the Detroit Red Wings. Mark Howe did it. And Dustin Bufflin does it to a level probably not quite to the level of Brent Burns. But isn't that amazing? Can you ever imagine playing defense in the NHL? <laughs> no, it's... Uh... Every once in a while, you get caught on the back end on the power play, and you know there's a breakdown. And you got to take a one-on-one, -on -one and you know you're just backing in and you know trying to not make a fool out of yourself. And um, hope the goal. That's, that's what I try to do every night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's fun. It's definitely a position. I think he has one of the best under understandings of the game. You know, just because he's experienced it at the highest level and has, has had success, you know, doing it both ways. So, you know, it's it's something that. I think just how he can dominate a game is with his size and speed and strength and how he can generate the shot power that he does, you know, standing still from the blue line or, or the touch he has around the net, it, it goes a long ways and, and that's just the sense that he can create so much for our team that way. With all of the work you guys have done together, you've also developed a really strong friendship off the ice and I wanted to address that for a little bit. Um, how has that developed and, and what do you guys like to enjoy to do together uh, on the road and at home? <laughs> Well, I think we love coming into Joseph George Wine Shop. And, uh, <laughs> wine, old fashions. Wine, I mean, that's two huge fashions. things. You know, if you get a free night and uh, extra time. Has he been fishing for walleye yet? He has not been fishing for walleye yet, but we're, we're working that way. And He did get me in the lake, though. That's the first time I've been in the lake. I'm terrified of fish. Yeah, he loves the RV. It was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was a nice summer day. Then we got a text that morning that he was coming through on the RV. And... Um, you know, we had the boat fired up in a few minutes, and it was great to have the families out there and get them on the wake surf. And he, he's afraid of lakes, if you guys don't know that about him. But he's but not afraid of snakes. Not afraid oh, of snakes. Not of afraid of the ocean. Nope. Um, well, he might be. I don't know for sure. Yeah, ocean's but. better. I'm, I'm weird with, like, those the fish, the muskies. I don't know. Those things look But the lake, yeah, it's, it was one of those things. But he got up there, and, you know, he's surfed before, and he's... You know, he's such a unique guy. It's uh, it was it was just cool to you know get together in the summer quick and on the road. A lot of dinners, obviously, and a lot of time if we get a chance to grab a drink or whatever. It's always fun to you know talk about the game or just see how everything's going. Bernsey, what do you think of this idea of Company Thirty Nine putting together the digital memoir and the program for fans to enjoy? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's not just great for fans. I think it's great for for our, even us as players to you know you get to see insights of of you know, we're all in the same spot, but we're totally different people. We, we do different things to get there. And, you know, I think the biggest thing for me, you know, coming to this team and, and uh, you know, learning things from guys to, to try to think elite and, and try to get yourself to be a better player, you got to find a good routine. And, and it takes a lot of, it's a lot of learning different processes, seeing different guys do different things. And, um, you know, I think that's the best part. So, you know, it's what we enjoy doing, all the different events, and you get to see other players. It's because it's you like to see what they do, how they tape their stick, what they're doing before games, what they're thinking. And, um, you know, it's all, it's all part of the process of trying to get yourself better. And it's, uh, it's a great way to learn just to, to see what's really making that person tick. It's great to have a Norris Trophy winner join us. Brent, thanks a lot for being here. Thanks, guys. We'd like to thank Brent Burns for joining us today, and we'll be right back with some fan questions and special guest Jeremy Ronan.
For me, it was, uh, you know, a little scary leaving home and going to something I didn't really have a lot of knowledge about and didn't have a lot of people to look at and lean on. You're transplanting a, a young man from, in this case, Plover, Wisconsin, into Waterloo, Iowa, into Waterloo West High School, and, uh, you know, everything's different. One of the big decisions that a hockey player has to make is to move away from home at a relatively young age. And Joe, you had to go to Waterloo, Iowa to do that, to play for the Blackhawks. We just saw a really interesting montage of things that happened to you there. But just give us an idea of what that experience was like and how tough that decision was. Yeah, it was, uh, I didn't really have anyone close to me that I knew that went to junior hockey and, and had a great experience. Um, so there was definitely some nerves. You know, are you making the right choice at, at this moment in your career? And you know, skipping your senior year where you've been very comfortable at home and, and moving away. And for me, it was coming out of the, you know, playing high school hockey, playing before and after Team Wisconsin, being recruited to Waterloo, signing a tender in the USHL, and, and now making that jump. It was, uh, you try to weigh the pros and cons, and, you know, at the end of the day, you want to be the best player you can. You want to play against the best players. And, you know, it's pretty cool to see everybody come together on a team and go through the tryouts and make the team. and. You know, for me, Waterloo was a great spot. But it's also a scary experience in a way, isn't it? Yeah, there, there's, you know, you're going to a different high school. Um, you're coming into a team where it's, you've got a lot of the best players from other teams coming together. And um, the one common factor is, though, we're all, we all love to play hockey and we're all trying to move on and, and play at a higher level and earn a scholarship and keep trying to grow our game. So it was exciting to get there and, and meet people from around the country and uh, around the world and you know really start focusing on hockey as much as you can and going through practices where they're longer but then at the end you got an extra 35 minutes of ice time and you can work on your shot you can you know play keep away you can just kind of you know enjoy some free ice when you become a professional hockey player your relationship to the game definitely changes a little bit it's still that game that you love and it's still that game that was fun but now you're actually having to apply yourself to it as a profession is that sort of what started in the ushl for you definitely um the ushl is that first kind of thought of all right this is you know we're on the path of of trying to make this real and you get there, you start hitting a few more workouts, uh, practice are a little bit longer. You really start learning about the game. And, you know, in high school with Coach Stoskoff, he laid such a great foundation for me in, in my work ethic. And, you know, whether we were skating sprints or, or just playing hard and, and competing for each other, he, when you got there, you definitely met a few more coaches that had other ideas, um, other players that knew certain things that had a higher skill level and you're gonna really have to apply yourself to learn the game and, and really improve your skills. What else did you learn from Coach O'Handley? Oh, <laughs> there's all kinds of things, but um, you know, Coach O'Handley, Chris Talk, a couple of those coaches that were there and were a big influence in my time, it was, you'd go through a game and you win or lose, there's definitely video to be watched and certain things to, to kind of learn about the game, it's just you, you kept knocking on his door and, and trying to see what he could offer. He had coached professional hockey and, you know, you, just the structure of the game really started to come out, whether it was, you know, the four checks that you were running, the power plays, um, the penalty kill, there was definitely more foundation at the USHL, lo USHL level. And for me, I ate that up, I loved that. And I didn't even know how much I enjoyed it. Um, just kind of all the little games inside of the the big game, it was something that I, I couldn't get enough of. And uh, at that moment, I had great coaches to, you know, teach me about those situations. And what was it like to get recruited by a top Division One college? <laughs> it was it was great. You know, as you start having a little bit more success and, um, you know, a few scouts start knocking on your doors and you kind of have an understanding of what schools you would really like to attend, um, take some visits see what it's all about, some bigger schools, some smaller schools. And at the end of the day, you know, a great piece of advice I had was, you know, save Wisconsin for the end. I mean, you're going to go there on a visit. And um, I went to Vermont. I went to northern Michigan, um, you know, some other schools in Minnesota so just to kind of check out. And that la last visit to the University of Wisconsin, it was within 10 minutes. I was in, you know, one of the hallways at the Kohl Center and, you know, I pretty much said to my dad, uh, you know, this is the spot. And 
you know, we'll work towards getting a scholarship here. And it was just such a feeling of, you know, confidence and coming to an organ, uh, you know, a university that has won national titles, which was definitely important to me. It was a team that was up and coming um, with Coach Mike Eves coming in, laying the found work, and a group of guys that you could see, you know, were applying themselves, went through a lot of rigorous, you know, training and, and workouts, and it was, it was just exciting. One thing that you had to learn in Waterloo was navigating life on your own, learning about just making sure you get up on time and you, your parents aren't there to help you. Tell us about that experience. Yeah, it's different. Um, you know, you're with a group of guys and you're all trying to figure it out together and we're young and want to have fun. And um, it's just about waking up, you know, getting to school on time, picking up one of your teammates, um, trying to get to practice on time and, and just kind of living that teenager life. And there's definitely a lot of lessons to be learned when you go out on your own and kind of move in with another family and around, you know, new people. Was that build it family really important to you? Yeah, for sure. And there were a couple of them that, you know, just the relationships that you can, you can kind of create and you can see how different people live. It's, uh, there's lessons, you know, throughout the whole process. And, and that was a big one, moving in with another family. There are a whole passel of people that are learning that lesson right now of the Waterloo Blackhawks, and it's time to get our first fan question from a member of that Blackhawks team, Jack Drury. This is Jack Drury from the Waterloo Blackhawks in Winnack, Illinois, and I was wondering what do you guys think are the three most important qualities to have as an NHL player to be an impact player every single game? Well, Joe, there are a lot of things that uh, can make a player an impact player in the NHL, but if you had to categorize it to three things, as Jack asked, how do you do it? Oh, um, man, three things. I think one of the first things for me is compete. You know, on a nightly basis, with all the travel, all the games, the, the compete level has to be there, and, and you can hang your hat on that. And then from there, as, as a player, you know, you, you want to be there for your teammates, and I think uh, being a two-way player, you know, as hard as you go offensively, if you can go that hard on defensively and, and if you can transition from offense to defense to get that puck back to go on offense again, that goes a long way. So compete, um, two-way player are a couple things. Um, and then just as you go along, you're learning you know, and, and being able to, to adapt to the game. And, and on a nightly basis, there's, you see different teams, you see different four checks. Uh, you know, some teams you have success, some you don't. So really trying to learn and adapt to, to certain game situations, whether it's been a period you're, you've been hemmed in and you just got to, you know, simplify it a little bit, that goes a long way. And I think for me, at the end of the day, the, the, what ties it all together is the process and, and going in, not getting ahead of yourselves because it's too easy to, to sit there right before the game and, you know, think you're going to score three goals and come away with no shots that night. And so if you can just tie in to... You know, let's worry about this first shift and compete and take care of this first period. You know, when, when you stay the course that way and, and stay the process, you usually end up with a pretty good night. Well, those are just a couple of the things that you're going to be seeing on this great program through the video and through all of the drills that Joe puts together with the ebook. These are the things that Company 39 wants to make sure that every young player has. And by going to company39.com, you can participate in all of this as well. Uh, Joe, that really is interesting. You, you mentioned all of those things because, uh, you know, there are a lot of guys that have a lot of talent, even NHL level talent, that don't even make it because they don't really persevere in some of those areas. I think so. Along the way, um, I've been so fortunate enough, and you see that throughout this digital memoir, just the coaches that I've had and the character that they've been able to still, instill in me. And, you know, growing up with my parents and, and being around my brothers and sisters. Character is such a big part of the game and in the culture in hockey. And for me, uh, that kind of character and culture goes a long ways. And you love seeing that in some of your teammates. And and it's just uh, definitely something you can hang your hat on at the end of the day. One of the best players in the history of the United States is Jeremy Roenick. He's now a nationally renowned broadcaster for NBC. And he's joining us today on our Company 39 show to ask a couple of questions from Joe Pavelski. Hey, Joe, what's up, buddy? It's JR, ex-teammate and still very good friend. Very excited about your new program, Company 39. Sounds like a great way to reach kids, tell kids about how to be a professional, what it takes to be a professional. Give them some hints along the way. I love it. By the way, loved being your teammate, loved watching you play. 
you are uh, you epitomize being a leader and working hard. But I always had some questions for you. So since I have this platform now, and I think a lot of other people would like to hear the questions and even more so the answers, I'm gonna throw a couple at you. So when you came into San Jose, you were smaller, you weren't as fast as everybody, but everybody knew that you were going to be a captain someday. Did you always know that you had those captain abilities, uh, the the know-how, the desire? Did you even want to be a captain? So, Joe, is uh, being a captain one of the great aspirations of your career? Well, I think definitely. You know, any hockey player, when you step on the ice, you want to be that go-to guy that, that's out there the last minute of the game to tie it up or, or to keep the lead. And um, some of my favorite players, Steve Eiserman, um, Mario Lemieux, you know, these guys that, you know, were, were leaders and were captains, you, you lean on, you watch their game, and you can't help but not wanting to be one. I remember Jeremy Roenick, who's asking these questions, uh, came into Game 7 against Calgary back in 2008, didn't play in Game 6, came up with maybe one of the biggest games of his career, four points. Yeah. That's the kind of thing that happens. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, that that's one of the experiences that I've been able to enjoy was playing with JR. And I remember coming off my first year and kind of fading towards the end of it, and JR comes in that next year, and he was... It was a big part in getting me going again. You know, we spent time on the fourth line, third line together, and um, really started finding a little chemistry and, you know, kind of propelled me up into, you know, a top six role. And he's, I, I remember that game and game sevens, you live for him. And you hope not to get there. You hope you can close it out before that. But played in a lot of them. We've won some, we've lost some. Um, it's just do or die and it's the best time. And, you know, for him to step up the way he did for our group that night, it was uh, definitely fun to be a part of. And you know what? That's what this program is all about, too, giving to the next generation. Jeremy Roenick has done it with Joe Pavelski, and now Joe Pavelski, through this program and Company 39, is doing it with all of you. Let's get back to JR for question number two. You went to Wisconsin. You decided to go the college route. What went into those decisions? Why did you decide to go college? And you think that was the right route? Do you think kids today should look at that route and it's a it's a, a good way to go about becoming a pro? Some people choose junior hockey. Some people choose the college route. Why did you decide to play in college hockey? Yeah, I think I chose college um, just with the type of player I was. Um, I went to the USHL where you recruited heavily, you know, with D1 schools. And for me... I knew I needed to get stronger. I knew my skating needed to improve. Um, and the college route allows you, gives you an extra couple of years to develop, whether it's one, two years or three, four. And it buys time for you to, you know, build strength, build character. And, you know, at the same time, you, you go to some of these universities. For me, it was University of Wisconsin. And they, they lay such a great foundation with academics and um, everything aside from there, it was, it was a route I, w I would never choose differently. It's all part of the educational process. Let's get to JR's question number three. We all have slumps, right? We all go through different things. I went through slumps, you go through slumps. What do you do to try to break out of those slumps? What are the things that you think about? Uh, does it bother you? Do you talk to your teammates? Uh, all the things that, uh, that try to keep you sane while you're still trying to be a leader, but also struggling. So you could be a 50 goal scorer every year and you could still have these times when the puck's not going in or it's not going quite the way you want to in the defensive zone, at least to the standard that you have. How do you get through those tough times at the pro level? It's amazing. That's a great question. Um, slumps happen and you swear when you're going good, they, they, they won't happen again, but they do. For me, the biggest thing um, is, is to build your confidence. Nobody can really give you confidence. No one can take it away from you. It's uh, it's about how you apply yourself in practice. And you have to go out and you have to work and you have to put it in. I think you earn your confidence through practice and, and knowing you shot some pucks and know you can hit that shot and know you can skate and you're strong on your feet. And, the, and you know, that all starts in the gym, starts on the rink. And for me, I just went through this not long ago actually. And I was sitting there and I wasn't happy with some of my personal stats and some wasn't it's not just about the stats, it's about the chances that I was generating. And I just thought they could be a higher quality. And I just kind of sat down, took a look at my process and 
where I was getting at and I said, all right, I'll get out in the morning, skate a little bit, shoot a few extra pucks, try to get the legs going more and, um, you know, just work myself back into, you know, better condition shooting the puck and wanting to shoot the puck and being around the net. And I think you find a lot of these drills that I probably do in the morning skates on the, on the Company 39 website. These are some of the ones I just lived over again over the last month and trying to reestablish my game. Part of that's process, but part of that is also the confidence that the process that you're going through is going to get you to the right spot, isn't it? I mean, the fact that you've been through this before, the fact that you have confidence in your abilities and you know you can get out of that? 100%. And, you know, you have, there's always somebody telling you you can't do it or you're slowing down or, or this is going to happen. But, you know, there's always that self-belief in there. And you have to apply yourself. You have to put the work in and just knowing that it's going to pay off. And the biggest thing is just being ready for your opportunity. And there's been a lot of moments in my career where I've been given an opportunity and I, I know it's been a direct re relationship to some of the work I've put in and I've been able to capitalize on it. Well, one of the great opportunities you got was to play in the Olympics. And that was a, an amazing moment for the United States. You were oh so close to getting a gold medal winning goal. I'll never forget that. But you got a silver medal with the United States. So tell us what that was like. Yeah, still one of the best games I've played in. Um, the Olympics in Vancouver that year were, there was so much energy throughout the city and we had a great young team, you know, with some great le leaders with Lane Bruner and Drury and um, to be in that position to play in that gold medal game was, you know, it's, it's hard to explain and for your country and um, Ron Wilson was there and he was one of my first coaches here and I think the confidence he showed in me to put me out in the last minute and try to help tie the game was you know, something I'll never forget and had a face off, had some help winning it. We were able to sustain some pressure. I got caught in the blue line, a puck came flipping out and I was able just to knock it down. Didn't even think about it and, you know, was able to get it down to Kaner and he got it to the net and, you know, Langenbrunner's banging away, Zach Preezy puts it in and, you know, just to hear that building go silent was uh, cool and know that we were still alive. But that knocking that puck down, that hand eye, it all started earlier in the year through an injury that um, you know, we talk about in the book and, and see some of the drills that I like to do. And I think it, it all kind of came together at that moment. And I understood what some of that practice, you know, can lead to. That's another level, though, representing your country. And John McCarthy was with the San Jose Barracuda, with this organization, with the Sharks, able to do that this year. And the, and the, uh, the ladies won the gold medal. And I know yeah. you were inspired by that. Oh, you know, so inspired and so happy to see all the hard work for them. Um, just the opportunities that those guys had to go over there. Good friend with Coach Tony Granato, who's who's part of this Company 39 video, um, you know, went over there and he was so generous to allow me to be a part of it, send a little message to the guys. And um, anytime the Olympics are coming on, summer, winter, you're watching, you're sitting on the edge of your seat, you're so proud of the Americans, your country, you know, winning medals. And um, to be able to experience it as a player and also as a fan, it's, it's so hard to explain the, the joy that comes from it. You're going to live with all of this through the Company 39 program. You can go to company39.com to get all of the information you need about this fabulous three-pronged program to help you become a better leader and a better hockey player. In a moment, we'll talk to Kevin Weeks, a goaltender who's had to face a few shots from people like Joe Pavelski. That's coming up. When you play a sport you love, I think it comes out naturally. I knew Joe was a, was a good hockey player. The puck gets to him, and it's fascinating to me, and that's his brain. One of the secrets of the pros is that they do their job, do their work. Watch some of the things that he does away from the puck. Watch his work ethic. You want your kid and your players to look at and say, I want to be like Joe. It wasn't a smooth ride to the top. It was pretty rocky. I like to read Harry Potter. He likes to read like mental books. Man, this guy just is working on it all the time. One of the great things about Joe Pavelski is that he works really hard at his craft. And one of the things that he works hardest at is tipping shots. Whether it's by Brent Burns or any one of his line mates, Joe Pavelski has a nose for the net. 
While there's a goaltender that uh, certainly has had to take his share of shots from Joe Pavelski over the years, and that's Kevin Weeks. Kevin's now a broadcaster nationally, but he remembers being on the ice and facing people like Joe Pavelski all the time. So we thought it would be pretty appropriate to have him ask Joe some questions. When did you decide that you wanted to be one of the best net front players in the game? Because I got to tell you, I played with Hall of Famers and Dino Cicerelli and Dave Andrichuk. They were amazing. It was like they were in the batter's box. You've got that ability as well in front of the net. And as an opposing goalie, that makes life heck for opposing goalies. When did you decide that you wanted to be a premium net front guy in the NHL? Joe, what is net front and what does it mean to be a net front guy? Man, uh, obviously net front presence. We talk about it all the time. There's nice, you, you leave a game, you had 45 shots, you got one goal. And it was just talked about being too easy on their goalie. And uh, these goalies these days are so good that they see it, they stop it most of the time. Something has to go wrong, so, you know, for it to go in the net. And, um, you know, so you're always trying to get to that net, make it tough on them, you know, be close to that crease. So they have to kind of stand up, look around, you get out of their position. And for me, one of the the early lessons that I had was, was probably from uh, Todd McClellan and uh, Jay Woodcroft, they came from Detroit where Thomas Holmstrom was one of the best tippers in the game and they had one of the best power plays and he would be there and they brought over, they talked about being a bad goalie, you know, so you're following, tracking that puck and when it comes, whether you can get your stick on it or if you just let it through an arm or however, just be a bad goalie, but make sure you're, you know, making it tough on the goalie for sure. Be a bad goalie, that's quite a concept. Of course, a goalie wants to be a good goalie, so let's get question number two from Kevin Weeks. You weren't labeled a top prospect by any stretch. However, you were great at the University of Wisconsin winning a national championship. You saw yourself as being an NHL player. You've willed and worked yourself to become an NHL player. How were you able to dig down and have that mental toughness that was required to help you get from playing in the USHL to college hockey to becoming an NHL All-Star? When the going gets tough, the tough get going, and mental toughness is such a huge part of this game, but give us your take on it. Oh, Weeksy, that's a great question, mental toughness. Um, you know, you probably know it better than anybody being a goalie and a lot of times coming in on a back-to-back -back night and, and having to be, you know, a rock for your team. It's, uh, when you get your opportunity, you gotta make it count. And I think just mental toughness is putting in the time, having the belief in yourself that when your chance comes, it's, you know, you're gonna make the most of it. And for me, I think the mental toughness starts in the summer and there's moments in the summer where I feel so good and the body's starting to come back and you're excited for the season. And it's about making a little check mark and about how you're gonna feel it because there's gonna be times where throughout the season you played three games and four nights and, and you're gonna need to kind of just understand this is what you want and this is what you're going or, you know, last minute of the game, last two minutes of the game, you're down by a goal, you know you're gonna get an opportunity. And it's about telling yourself and, and believing that we're gonna work, we're gonna get a chance and we gotta be ready for it and make this happen. Let's get the next question from Kevin Weeks. Everybody has a favorite player growing up. Who was your favorite hockey player and why? Joe, all of us have our favorite players and I'm very interested to know who yours was. Oh, mine growing up. My brother loved the St. Louis Blues. Um, you, you know, when you're younger, your older brother's, you know, a big part of your life. And for me, it was Brett Hall. Um, I loved the way the guy could think the game and I didn't even know what he was probably doing at the time, but he always seemed to find open ice and loved the way he could shoot the puck. You know, there weren't many guys that could shoot it like he, like him and find that quiet space and, and just score the goals. And um, so Brett Hall was, was somebody I always looked at and you, you always wanted to go down on one knee and hit a one-timer and um, do some of the things that he was doing. But yeah, so many great players out there. It's hard to pick one. Um, you know, what do you think? What was your best, your, one of your favorite players growing you up? You know, nobody's ever asked me that. I have to tell you, I think the key times in life are between the ages of about 8 and 14. That's some, when some of your greatest sports memories occur. And, you know, that's another interesting thing for, for parents that are watching this, that 
uh, you've got an opportunity to help your 8 to 14 year old learn some of the skills and maybe develop his favorite players. And uh, I grew up around New York City about two hours away in the state of Connecticut and uh, the team that I followed was the New York Rangers and my favorite player was Jean Rattel. And the reason why was because he was a, a first class center iceman, somebody who really could see the game really well. He was exceedingly skilled. He was the most gentlemanly player in the game and a real class guy off the ice kind of like the captain of the San Jose Sharks. And I'll tell you, uh, he's somebody that had an amazing career, over 20 years in the NHL. He never did win a Stanley Cup, but, but I have to say that uh, uh, these are memories that I've got that are very strong with me. And I know that people are fans of yours that are 8 to 14 years old are thinking the same thing. And this brings things back to our, our Company 39 program. We're teaching leadership, we're teaching skills, and we're teaching the things that make you do things right on and off the ice. And that's what this program is really all about. So when I come out uh, summertime, uh, pregame skates, I like to just warm up my hands, just right from the slot, pick low, low blocker, high glove. Well, now it's time for our lightning round of questions sent in by fans. Let's go to Long Beach, New York and Ryan Nyland. Hi, Joe. This is Ryan Nyland from the Long Beach Lightning. What was that feeling like of playing in your first NHL game? I remember my first NHL broadcast like it was yesterday. What was it like for your first NHL game? Oh, I, I remember it like it was yesterday as well. Um, I was sleeping in my bed in Worcester and got a phone call 2, 3 a.m. Um, from Coach Roy Summer at the time and was on a plane that morning from Boston out to San Francisco in a, in a limo, got to the Hotel, quick nap, got to the rink, and you know it was a three-hour time change. I was already starting to get a little tired, but the energy that you have, and the excitement in your first NHL game, it was uh, pretty easy to get up for. And I think Milan Mahalik went down with a, a bicep injury. I got to play with Patrick Marlowe and Steve Bernier first game, and um, to have that opportunity to play 15, 16 minutes, and really be able to lean on some of these players in that room from Joe Thornton and Patrick Marlowe and you know, of getting to Bakoff, it was, uh, there's so much to take from them and they just helped me right through that game and just had to, you know, go out and play. And I remember getting the puck and just being like, not jittery, but someone's going to come hit me. This game's going to be so fast. I don't know if I can handle it. And, you know, if guys would get open, you'd move the puck, you'd skate. And it was, it was the same old game. It was hockey. It was something we loved and just, you know, having that chance to live out that dream that first time. Fabulous question, fabulous answer. Let's go to question two in the lightning round from Louis Ferro in Calgary, Alberta. Hi, my name is Louis Ferro and I play for the Midget AA Calgary Canucks. And my question for you is, what has been the hardest thing to sacrifice on your journey to where you are now? There are a lot of things you have to give up. Isn't that true? Yeah, there really is. Um, sacrifice, it's a continuous thing, you know. One is just, I think for me, if you're going to play in the NHL, you're not going to be a common person. Um, you know, so you can't always do common things, whether it's going out at night certain times or skipping a workout. It's if you really want to get there and be the best you can, you got to put the, put in the work and, and you got to establish that work ethic and try and improve your skills. And so there's definitely social things that you, you sacrifice. Uh, the biggest factor for me now and kind of throughout the process was the family moving away. and even now in the season when we go on longer road trips and just that sacrifice of being away, whether you're missing something for the a kid's game or, you know, just birthdays, holidays, there's times you got to be around and, and that's the toughest thing, but we've built up such a, you know, great family out here and Sarah and Nathan, you know, with, with their, all the support team that I have, it's, it's something that they definitely allow it, allow me to be myself and make it easy on what I love to do. Every sacrifice in hockey is really an investment in yourself. And that's what you're doing with this program, with Company 39 as well. Let's get to the third question. We've had a lot of different players and uh, fans and youth people asking questions, but how about somebody that's coaching professional hockey? Spencer Carberry is with the Providence Bruins of the American Hockey League. Hey Joe, this is Spencer Carberry, assistant coach with the Providence Bruins. Had a question for you today. With all the changes in the game of hockey over the last five, ten years, with rule changes, etc., is there anything that you've done with your game individually uh, to change or alter, to adapt to the way that the game's changed? 
adapt. That's one of the things that you've said is one of the keys to being a great professional. How do you do it? Yeah, um, you know, from a nightly basis, from game to game, team to team, you, you have to adapt to certain situations and certain your players you're playing against. And I think that's one way for me is looking at some of these guys on your own team, guys that have come in younger, older. Um, I'm a Connor McDavid with the speed that he can carry and the skill set. Um, it's fun to kind of watch how these guys train. You know, if you get little glimpses or can ask questions and just understanding, you got to put that work in. Um, I've actually talked about this subject with Ron Johnson, somebody who I who was a part of the film and a part of of my skill set over the last five six years. And one thing that we talk about is knocking pucks out of the out of the air and keeping plays alive offensively and defensively defensively and he believes that game is is going there where you know the teams that can you know make plays in the air is, is good also about creating space off the walls how you pick up pucks off the wall um, what kind of space you can give yourself Th those are areas that I look at right now trying to create a little extra gap in, in my game and in separation Throughout the course of this program, people are learning a lot of different skills, but one thing that keeps coming back to me is the love of the game. Don't you think that uh, when people participate in Company 39's program, they're going to actually enhance their love of this great sport? I think so. For me, um, I'm excited with what Company 39's doing and everything that they're trying to establish and, and how it's going to grow over the next year. Um, I want to see other stories. I want to see great stories. I want to see certain drills that some of these players are doing. I want to learn from them. Um, so I'm, I'm excited with what Com Company 39 has produced and, and the story that, that we've put out together and uh, definitely proud to be, be a part of it. This has really been a fantastic experience and I want to thank you for allowing me to be part of it as well. And we want to thank all of you for watching this very, very important video. You know, if you want to be a better hockey player, if you want to enhance your love of the game, if you're a parent that wants to help your, your son or daughter become a better hockey player and a better person, I think that this program is really for you. Go to company39.com and find out all the details on how to be part of the Joe Pavelski Digital Memoir. We'd like to thank Warrior for being part of this experience. They certainly have been involved behind the scenes in helping out. And of course, to Joseph George, the number one purveyor of wine from California in the entire United States. We appreciate their participation in this program as well. We thank Joe Pavelski, we thank Kevin Weeks, we thank Jeremy Roenick and Brent Burns, and we thank you for joining us. I'm Dan Rusinowski. Have a great day.